Hi, I'm James, I'm at MG Space, and I'm gonna walk you through our Make Fashion EDU teaching process. So our six steps are uh, empathy, define, ideate, build, revise, and share. Um, I base them off of Stanford D School's design thinking steps, uh, but we have a, a sixth one, uh, sharing, because we think that it's really important to the design of a project that a student knows it's gonna go on a serious platform. These first three steps are about understanding the story that you have to tell, and they increasingly help a student develop that into a real product. And we have a lot of different ways to do those things. Um, under empathize, yeah, interviews or doing field research to get a better definition of your idea, you can role play out things. You can do a mind map to just clarify your story and what you want to build. So in mood boards, uh, students create from photography or paintings a big board about the emotions that they want to convey, the lifestyle that they want to convey in their piece. So in this candy dress, uh, we were able to see a lot of different colors uh, that conveyed candy. And then we got fabric to match those colors. Some of it was custom made by the student and some of it was, was found at the fabric markets in Shenzhen. And then in the ID8 step, I mean, that's brainstorming, that's, that's sketching, that's storyboarding, a lot of different ways. Once we have a clear idea of the story we want to tell and a small idea of how we want to build it, and they start putting stuff together. We have uh, like rapid prototyping materials to make shapes that you can attach things to just to get uh, a rough sketch of what the build should look like. We did some small um, testing with the candy concept, making little, uh, little head pieces, using a few colors that we liked, making kind of artificial candies. We didn't really like how those came out, but it was important to test them first and say, oh, making an actual piece of candy isn't what we're looking for. What we landed on was the, the colors of candy to get some of that feeling. So um, a lot of fashion designers actually look at tech and we can see that in this year's uh, Met Gala and other things. They're, they're looking at tech and they're excited by it, but tech can be really intimidating. It can be easy to get everything that you need uh, from the open market, but it's challenging, when, um, it's challenging when you don't know what types of connectors to get, uh, what type of, of solder connections will break when you're walking down the runway. So we have done a lot of work to find simple things that all kind of connect together and that are durable enough for a student's costume when they're moving around, even the, some of the crazier ones. Um, and we've also looked how to get the, the cheapest and widest variety of things so that every student in the classroom can have some some voice, some design decisions to make with a smaller package of electronics. Uh, finally, we get to the build step. After about half the class, we finally start building. This is usually a really fast step. Students have spent so much time thinking about their ideas that they can't wait to get started on them, and we see so much creativity during this build step come to life. This student, uh, David, over here wanted to make uh, some robotic stuff, some strong robotic stuff. So on his, on his empathy step, he had a lot of dark, evil robots, a lot of angles. So after his empathy step, he was able to find materials that supported that. So we landed on um, EVA foam and uh, uh, like a, a clear cut acrylic. And he used a little bit of paint to modify some of the colors. This splash texture, you know, that was from him seeing that the, the kind of strong robots that he wanted to represent were often battle damaged. In, in Revise, uh, we know that we're gonna be sharing the projects out. So we'll usually set up like a mini gallery or runway inside the teaching space and have everybody rehearse, have everybody give presentations, walk on a runway. And this is when things start to break, uh, either physically or stories can kind of break down. When you, you had an idea up in the beginning that was so clear, and sometimes you made sacrifices along the way to get it built. This is our chance to test those things. So here, we're not only revising the costume, but we're also going back and reviewing the story that we told and making sure it's all cohesive, that it all holds together. This isn't just about putting lights on dresses. This is about expressing something that a student wants to share with the world. And so this is an important step in that. So David wanted to show this heavy robotic caricature 
in his project. And he felt that using the right tools was important to achieve that effect. And uh, actually it was. It was important when he was building the costume that he have like heavy hardware tools available to build. That was inspiring for him. Uh, when we finished the project and removed the tools, it was harder to see that effect. I mean, of course we can see it in the fact that it's robotic, but what we did was we made a little display board. And so he brought his uh, display board to our gallery and people would walk up and talk to him about different stuff. And this little tool board was quite popular. A lot of students haven't used um, some of these tools. David was able to you know, name them out and say how he used them to modify the materials. Uh, finally, we do a share step. And what we usually do is we put on a big runway show. So once a year in Shenzhen, in Tucson, in Calgary, you can find steam runway shows. Uh, ours is in a beautiful museum in SeaWorld. And, uh, the students are always amazed at how many people come to see what they've created. Student stories told through fashion is an exciting thing to see. And the runway show is important because we put a lot of effort into making it a professional show. So students are able to walk down uh, a stage in front of a live public audience and show what they've created. And when students see um, evidence of prior shows and know that they are gonna be in the gallery or on the runway of one of our shows, they know that this is an important project. And you see them put so much more uh, motivation into something that people are really going to look at and really going to see. It removes them from the environment of school and shows them that learning is an important life skill. So the sharing part is we build a big platform for the students and that motivates them to create something very inspirational. After the show, that we have seen ourselves um, sharing with others uh, in photography, in video, also just talking with people about the ideas. And then we have a chance to uh, meet back together, uh, talk about what else we wanna do with our designs and what next steps uh, we as, as fashion creators, as designers and makers want to take. A lot of students might be, might be interested in more tech or coding. Uh, some students might be interested in new tools and materials. And so the point is that they are able to evaluate their design, um, have a chance to make some small changes and set a future path for themselves. So if you, if you like what you've seen, uh, if you're inspired by these student projects, uh, you can find a lot of ideas on makefashion.org slash edu on our website. Uh, you can contact us on WeChat. We'll put the ID below. Um, you can also reach out to MG Space uh, they, they speak in Chinese, they're bilingual, so you can get a lot of information from them. And if you guys are creating cool fashion tech stuff, send it to us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. We would love to share out both your teaching methodologies and your student results, your student projects. Um, there's a big community here and everybody is doing all kinds of different stuff. So we wanna share your stuff as much as we wanna share the projects of our own students. Our channel has feature videos on individual student projects, as well as tech and instructional teaching videos, with more coming soon. Make Fashion EDU is supported by the 501c3 nonprofit Steamhead, and you can support future educational productions and initiatives through Patreon at the link below. We also have a new book that features last year's collection of amazing student work, as well as tech kits for your own projects that we source and assemble ourselves.